Hey look, another video talking about Battlefield 2042. When's the next GTA vid? In due time, little Timmy. In due time. Before you start swinging your fist at me like we're at a mosh pit in Denny's, I will admit that it is good to hear something about 2042. What we really needed was some clarity, some actual feedback from the devs who pushed this game out and then let the community rip it apart like a horde of zombies. So today we'll be picking at the key points of the roadmap and see where we go from there. Okay Alexa. What can I do for you, Blackout? Set destinations for hell. We will be arriving to hell in one second. Traversal. One of the core issues we have identified is traversal. We both see and have heard your frustrations on how long it takes on maps today to travel. And I'm gonna stop you right there. Did you even play the maps before they got released? I get it, 128 player lobbies, something that anybody who likes big scale combat would be wetter than a water park and a hurricane over, but did you not think of how long it would take to get from point A to point B? They also heard the words such as walking simulator be used to describe the maps and that it isn't a satisfying experience. See, that's where you're wrong EA. If you want a real walking simulator people enjoy, try Walking Simulator from Steam. Why? Because it's free. The reviews are mostly positive and it seems like people actually enjoy a walking sim. The only difference is that not only is it free, but it's expected to be nothing more than walking. When you buy a Battlefield game, you expect action and destruction, not walking. Intensity. Another area we've identified where we feel that we can improve your gameplay experience is in the overall intensity of combat. Largely, we feel that this issue is mainly related to 128 player modes, and especially in Breakthrough. Can you quit blaming the 128 player modes for shit, please? We know that during certain pushes for the objective, it can get too chaotic when fighting over flags. What did you expect? Seriously, it's always going to be a hot zone near objectives. That's the point of them. They say that they're testing bringing down the size of the game mode from 128 to 64 and all I can say is that I hope they've set the proper boundaries or else these issues are going to be more apparent. Now, we're going to skip a little bit and touch on something I've heard countless amounts of people complain about, cover. Cover is essential in FPS games. In fact, I think it's more important than the damn objectives themselves because if you have the objectives but not the cover, then what's the point? Lastly, the current lack of cover across maps is another improvement area which is also caused by the open and flat spaces that you have encountered on certain maps. In line with what has been discussed in some of our focus areas, our intent is to reduce the likelihood of being fired at from a 360 degree angle, and to take away that Hail Mary feeling of running onto no man's land between objectives. Again, I gotta ask. Did you even play the maps before the release? It doesn't really help the flow of a battlefield game if you're having gunfights in the Sonoma County hillside where there is no cover. And for all the zoomers in the audience, that is the Windows XP wallpaper. The more you know. I mean, Battlefield 4 has phenomenal options for cover, and it made you feel a little bit safer with running, scratch that, going for a Hail Mary, when going through different parts of the maps. Now, they do provide some examples of these changes they're making to the maps, but honestly, I don't understand them enough for me to give a good, valid opinion, so I'm gonna recommend y'all go check out Big Fry. He's a content creator that I can rely on to give fair and amazing commentary on anything from indie games to AAA titles. So go check him out if you want another take on this topic. And then come back because, you know, I'll miss you. What's next? Hopefully a free-to-play approach. I'm aware there are people who enjoy this game, and I'm glad for those that do. But a lot of us are waiting for this game to become a free-to-play or die after the first update, and we're not sure which one is going to come first. The closing statement says that they don't take the community for granted, and this is something I struggle grasping. And not from this company, but from other companies in general who get caught lacking and then have to explain why this game is as screwed up as it is now. I understand companies are here to make money from us because gaming is becoming bigger than Hollywood and I'm pretty sure it is at this point. But if you don't deliver something good now, nine times out of 10, it will never become better down the road. I know games like Destiny and No Man's Sky who have had those instances of being absolute dumpster fires, but then come back and become gems. But this is a one in a million situation, and this situation feels like one of EA's dime a dozen excuses. I seriously hope all of you did enjoy the video. Thank you so much for showing so much love and support on the last Battlefield video that I did. I had no idea it was gonna kind of, you know, blow up like that. And when I say blow up, I mean for a channel my size. I know there are channels my size that are making thousand view videos, but hey, 
Guess what? I'm not that guy. Okay, trust me. I'm not that guy. <laughs> but overall, I love and appreciate every single one of you. If you can, please leave a like and support the channel. Come check me out on Twitch. I go live three to four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I would love to have all of you there so we could talk about games, content, tattoos, your weird foot fetish that you have on Friday nights. I don't care. Let's talk about it. And as always, I'm your host with the most going live from overseas and coast to coast, blackout and going dark. I will see all of you in the next one. Keep it brutal. Keep each other safe. Until next time. Later!